pleasure it is to welcome all of you back inside the Louisiana Superdome. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico. Welcome to Monday Night Football. The last time the thousands gathered here, their mission was survival. Well, 56 weeks after Hurricane Katrina, everything's changed about New Orleans. But as thousands gather back in here for the first time since, they gather back in here with the real purpose of why this building, this great building, with so many memories, was built three decades ago to enjoy a big time good old fashioned Southern football game with a couple undefeated teams playing for the league in the NFC South. Quite simply tonight is the most significant New Orleans Saints game ever. And they're here for the return in New Orleans with Michelle Tafoya, Susie Culver on the sideline, Mike Tirico, Tony Kornheiser, Joe Theismann in the booth. As you heard the Falcons are ready to receive Michael Vick will get on the field. John Carney set to kick it off for New Orleans with Alan Rossum to receive. A moment almost unimaginable 13 months ago is here. The NFL, the Saints, back in New Orleans, back in the Superdome. Rossum from the five. And a nice return to the 29-yard line. And that brings Michael Vick and the Atlanta Falcons out to the field. Quite simply, what Michael Vick has done in the first couple of games is be like the Michael Vick that we saw in Virginia Tech when he almost won a national championship in this building against Florida State. He's running. He's run for 175 yards this year, tied for eighth in the NFL through his first couple of weeks. drive starts from the 29 and Vic gives to Warwick Dunn throws the right side to the 35 gain of six after the gain of six second and four and Vic's first throw of the night is incomplete it was intended for Michael Jenkins Vic lost the football. Goes out of bounds. New Orleans did not have possession. It's still Atlanta ball, but it's fourth down. Fujita came in and freed it out of Vic's hand. And Byron Scott had an opportunity to pick it up and run it in for a touchdown. Michael's got the ball out loose, trying to straight arm. Fujita does a nice job. Byron Scott gets a good hop, tries to scoop it with one hand, and can't make the play. So much for the notion that Michael Vick will run <laughs> wild starting with the first play. Michael Kanan, who uh, has made a headline for missing six of his eight field goal attempts this year, is now back to just punting and kicking off. The former St. Morton Anderson is here for most field goals. Look out! Right through! A kick block by Steve Gleason! It is scooped and scored by Curtis DeLoach! John Carney for the extra point. Seven nothing, New Orleans. Unbelievable how this the center was blocked. Remember, you can't line anybody up over the center, and what they do is they just create this giant gap for Gleason to go through, and he's on the kicker before he ever gets a chance to get it off. Watch how close he is to taking off his hands. You could not Perfect script block. this any better that it just happened for the New Orleans Saints. Everybody thought that the wave of emotion would come in with the Saints. If you were the Falcons, the first thing you had to be afraid of is being swept away in that particular wave of emotion. That is exactly what happened now. And for those people who look to the New Orleans Saints as something that will uplift them, uplift this city, uplift the entire Gulf region, they just had it. This is like a slap in the face to the Atlanta Falcons to say, okay, look, we know it's all about the Saints here, but you know what? This is a football game, and we better get ourselves ready for it. 
Gleason, who was a big special teams presence the last few years, came up with the block. Deloach was waived by the Giants. That's how he ended up on this roster. Third year in the league, and that is his first National Football League touchdown. Joe, you can say it's a football game for the Atlanta Falcons, but for people in here and people watching a root for the Saints, it's more than a football oh. game, and that delivered on everything they could have hoped for. D'Angelo Hall, who is a bottle of excitement as well, is back with Rossum to return this kick. And it comes to the hands of Rossum, who fakes the backward pass to Hall and is brought down at the 28-yard line for a franchise who, in their very first game, 1967, returned the opening kickoff in franchise history for a touchdown on this rebirth night, a moment to remember. Vic and the Falcons take over from their own 28. And Michael runs out the back door. Game of three, pushed out of bounds by Fred Thomas. Even though that was a big play on the blocked punt, Sean Payton has to be careful that his ball club doesn't get too high. Because you can go through an adrenaline depletion where everybody's excited, everybody's emotionally jacked to the heights, and then all of a sudden you get completely drained and your legs feel like lead and you feel like you're running in cement. And I guarantee you, Reggie Bush's heartbeat is going off the charts right now. It's so electric in here. They have to stay calm as long as they can and settle into the game against Vic and company. After an official gain of four, second and six. And Vic to the air. It is complete for a first down at the 40-yard line, caught by Michael Jenkins. Michael Vick looked like an entirely different person when I've had a chance to visit had a chance to visit with him yesterday He's so relaxed. He looks like he's enjoying the game He's much more disciplined and he's very decisive whether he's throwing the ball or running with it And we've seen that on back-to-back -back plays. He's been running with it fabulously But it looks like the Saints know he's gonna do that. They're gonna force him a pass which has been his weakness to the game's first first down. They're waiting for Vic, who throws incomplete. Josh Bullock's put on the pressure. This is what you want to do if you're playing against Atlanta. He can kill your running. He might kill your passing, but, but history has shown he's only a 51, 52% passer. You want to take his legs out of the game and make him use his arm. You take the might side versus the sure thing. Yeah. Oh, sure. <laughs> yeah. Those sure. numbers are in their first two games. Sure. Obviously, they ran the ball well, yeah. but those are like one-half stats for Brett Favre these days, you know? <laughs> it just looks odd, but they are so effective doing the safest thing in football, running it. Second and ten, he reads the end and hands it to War Gun. Gain of four, here's Michelle Tafoya. Well, Mike, the Falcons know they are underdogs tonight. As Warwick Dunn put it to us, it's us against the world. The whole country is cheering for the Saints. A week ago last Sunday after their win, Jim Moore immediately sat down with his team and began to prepare them for this environment. He talked to them again Monday, then again Wednesday, and then he said, we're not talking about it anymore. Moore has confidence his team is mature enough to handle this situation and thrive in it. Mike, we'll see how they recover from that opening blocked pump. Jim knows all about this place and how special the Saints are to New Orleans. His dad, the winningest coach in franchise history, he coached here as an assistant for five years. Third down, Vic throwing the deep ball for Ashley Lalee, who holds it in, and it'll be marked down at the eight-yard line. So Lalee, who came via the trade from Denver, holds in the long strike of 48 yards. We make such a big deal about Michael Vic, the runner. And you sort of poo-poo, well, he throws the ball, okay. He's now got another weapon in Ashley Lalee. He has a big, tall, six-foot-three receiver against Mike McKenzie. Mike tries to get a hands on it. This is snuggling. Ashley does a nice job of just hauling it in, but the ball was perfectly thrown. That's why they got Lalee to go deep, because Mike Vick throws the deep ball better than the short ball, doesn't he? You are correct. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Dunn goes right side. Mike McKenzie there for the tackle. Gain of about a yard. Now, uh, those of you just clicking over, quite a night here in New Orleans, not just for guys like Warwick Dunn, born in this city, but for all the Saints, all the city, all the NFL, 13 months after Hurricane Katrina, this dome, which hosted evacuees who were trying to survive, 
now hosting football the way this building was meant to do when it was built three decades ago. The Saints blocked a punt on the fourth snap of the game, a minute and a half in. Saints haven't run a play on offense. Falcons trying to tie the game. And Vic luffs it up. It is incomplete for his security blanket. His tight end, LG Crumpler. Roman Harper, the rookie at Alabama, on coverage. That doesn't seem like much, but Michael Vick, Vick showed you there that he has touch, but also an excellent job of coverage. You see, Ron, now this is Harper. This is Roman Harper, a rookie who's starting for the Saints, having a chance to make a play. That's a poor percentage of touchdowns in the red zone. The reason has been penalties and sacks. Third and goal. Blakely, the second tight end in motion in the slot at the top. He's still looking for Algie Crumpler. And he throws that way. Crumpler had to go in and out of his hands. Incomplete. I'm sorry you've got to catch that. <laughs> you have to catch it. This is particularly for me. I've got him in fantasy tonight. Algie that just Crumpler. hurt me. Algie Crumpler Whoa. has been the receiver that Michael Vick has thrown the most to. This is simple for him. This is easy, and he can't put it away. Morton Anderson, the all-time leading Saints kicker, signed this week by the Atlanta Falcons. It is the oldest player to take the field in the National Football League as he is welcomed back home, quote-unquote, since 1975 in George Blanda. The 46-year-old from 26 yards. I hope that's in his range at 46. And Morton Anderson back on the scoreboard again in his 355th NFL game. <laughs> Michael Kanan on the kickoff. Aaron Stecker returns, tripped up at the 15-yard line. Omari Lowe, backup safety, makes the tackle. <laughs> Breeze first snap, first throw. Deuce McAllister out of the backfield. To the 20-yard line, a tackle made by Michael Boley. Reggie Bush, who lines up in the backfield. Or on the side, excuse me, he takes that toss and gets to the 25-yard line. That's the 70th offensive snap Bush has been on the field for. 22 lining up as a receiver, 48 as the running back. Reggie Bush really is as advertised, and that's not for me. That's when you talk to his teammates. They understand the impact that he can have on a football team. He had 15 receptions in the first two games, led all running backs in the first two games in receptions. Been effective as a runner. He's really qualified as a space player, somebody that gets to the perimeter and can make things happen. And you saw a little discomfort from Reggie after that gain of five, so McAllister is in there for third and a long two. And Breeze's pass is deflected and incomplete. Fourth down. We saw Reggie Bush almost trip when he tried to make his cut. The field is soft. It's, it's real new turf. It hasn't been matted down yet. You'd almost call it a slow field. If they let grass grow a little bit, it's more difficult to be able to plant and cut. And, and that's what you saw in Reggie Bush. And uh, it, it just it slows down the speed of the players. Steve Weatherford, the rookie out of Illinois, is punting his punt. Of 39 yards is caught by Rossum. And Alan Rossum is brought down hard at the 42 yard line by Omar Stoutmeyer. Uh, I'm sure many people who didn't have tickets were around the dome just to soak up some of the atmosphere. Good field position for Atlanta's third drive of this opening quarter. And after the fake Vic throws, nearly intercepted, he loves Crumpler, and the safeties know it. Roman Harper and Josh Bullock's in coverage. And the Saints know that he loves Crumpler, Mike. What they're going to do is both of the safeties are going to bracket him. This is Josh Bullock and Roman Harper again. Algie's working to the middle. You see Harper close. They like Harper. Alabama guy started three years down there. Really won the job. When you think about Sean Payton, he let his players go out and win jobs. Just because you were a veteran didn't mean you had one. Michael Jenkins, the slot man in motion, coming closer to you. And Dunn reads the block of Justin Griffith. Not much room. Third and eight. Receiver slip. Pass incomplete. Mike McKenzie covering Roddy White. 
Michael, this turf is going to be an issue all night. Even though Mike McKenzie jumped the route, you're going to see Roddy White have problems with his footing. He makes the cut. Now he tries to plant, and you see his feet slide right out. It's going to force these receivers to run with their body on top of their legs. Michael came in with a punt. Lance Moore lets it bounce. It died, and I don't think Amari Lowe could locate it. Touchback. First time in franchise history, the New Orleans Saints sold out for the entire season. A statement stronger than any of how much the Saints mean to this city. First three snaps in the three and out, all throws for Drew Brees. And the Saints, this drive starts after the touchback from the 20. Deuce McAllister running on a surgically repaired knee, gains three to the 23. Joe, you made the point before that, that the field is soft and the field isn't working right now. How long until a new turf field settles down to where when you plant and make a cut like Reggie Bush is doing, you know, you, you, can, you can hold the cut? I think it'll take at least a year and there's going to have to be lots of play. You have to treat this field like a muddy, rainy field. The little guys with the short strides will be more effective than long striders trying to make cuts on this turf. So after the McAllister gain of three, Bush out in space to the left. The attention goes there, and the pass goes for a first down to Joe Horn at the 34-yard line, thrown by Drew Brees. And as you know, Drew Brees was with the San Diego Chargers for four years, led them to the playoffs. He has come to New Orleans in large part. He was available in free agency because of the injury he suffered, the major shoulder injury at the end of last year's season. And Breeze had great numbers against the Packers last week. When you look at the numbers, 353 yards uh, throwing, Mike, you got to figure there's nothing wrong with his arm. And he's back today, so it can't be tired. And play action from the 34, looking towards Reggie, who's covered in the pass for Horn. Is incomplete. When, when you think about Drew Brees, guys, that we talk about the San Diego situation, and obviously he proved in that spot that he could be a leader, he could be a quality quarterback in this league. But that whole situation with Philip Rivers sitting there had to be resolved, and finally was as Brees and free agency came here. And it's a place, Tony, that I think he found, a, as he worded it, a calling to. He said when he talked about he could have gone to Miami, he came here, he said, I got the feeling from New Orleans, you are our guy. We've been waiting for a guy like you for a long time. And he said, I'll sign him right now. Of course, money helped. Yeah, yeah, 60, mil 60 <laughs> million of it helped. Breeze throws complete to Marcus, or rather, Jeffrey Henderson. The former LSU Tiger gets the first down to the 48-yard line to pick up a 14. I, I don't want to make it seem like he was the Red Cross and didn't take any money because he took a lot of money, but he also settled into the community. He and his wife bought a house on the same block, I believe, where Archie Manning lives. People will tell you that you see him around town ordering beignets. You see he and his, he and his wife in the park. He said, I I'm going to live here. You're going to see me here. I commit to the city as the team commits to me. Up the first downs here on this drive and the toss to Bush looking for space finds Michael Boley good second year outside linebacker loss of a few it's Bush lost three on that one and here he goes again this time hitting it hard and just shy of midfield you'd like to utilize a guy like Reggie Bush get him out into space try and get him to the perimeters screens draws quick screen swing passes parts of the offense that you can get him outside the turf I think will play a factor for him I really believe that this turf does not favor a Reggie Bush just like wet a wet field would he's going to be better off going north and south than trying to put the cute quick moves on to slide outside not just Bush but Aaron Stecker another running back is lined up as a receiver here on third and eight and Atlanta is going to take time out here Falcon sideline saw something uh, that hasn't been on film yet in that five wide, so they stop it here. This is an Atlanta defense that has been so stingy all year, haven't allowed a touchdown. So with the timeout, well, let's check in with Susie Culver. Susie? Well, Mike, after that incredible Saints start, the block punt for a touchdown, offensive coordinator Doug Marone gathered his offensive line on the sideline. You can see him motioning, calm down, take a deep breath. It's just the beginning. We have a long way to go. And that was the theme throughout the sideline. Sean Payton brought his team here Friday 
hockey night. He tried to simulate the emotion of tonight. I'm here to tell you, from this vantage point, it would be impossible. The energy is off the charts. Yeah, Susie Sean Payton, the 42-year-old, that, that kind of fits his profile, keeping his team calm. Remember, he replaced Jim Hazlitt, who was here for six years, the defensive coordinator now for St. Louis. Payton, the last three years with the Cowboys, running Bill Parcells' offense before that. Help the Giants as the coordinator with Jim Fossil get to the Super Bowl. This is his first opportunity as an NFL head coach at age 42. After the Atlanta timeout, third and eight. And Breeze's throw is complete to Marcus Colston. Penalty marker down, back at the quarterback. Patrick Kearney was rushing. It may add to a 27-yard gain. Let's see. You just can't touch a quarterback anymore in this league. And the Saints, D'Angelo Hall, shaken up on the play as well. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Defense, led with the helmet. 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. The league has placed an emphasis on protecting quarterbacks. If somebody hits them low or you hit them with the crown of your helmet, you're going to wind up with a penalty. Meantime, all the way through the timeout, D'Angelo Hall, the Pro Bowl corner for the Falcons was down. Now getting up. Let's go back to the end of the Colston completion. All diving in. He hits him. Not sure whether it's a knee or an ankle. Not quite certain. He stands up and seems to be fine and now comes off. With some assistance. So no. you take away one of the best cornerbacks in the NFL. That, that really hurts, and it hurts D'Angelo Hall because he was a guy who was going to play some offense as well tonight. Remember, he was saying how he wanted to score a touchdown and announce himself to the entire world. Well, he was going to play offense and defense. Well, what you do here if you're the New Orleans Saints is you figure, okay, Alan Rossum has taken his place. I like my odds. Joe Horn against Alan Rossum. One of the things D'Angelo Hall said, and I quote, the world needs to see D'Angelo Hall. I'm sure he didn't feel they needed to see him like that being helped off the field. Three receivers from Lawyer Malloy goes out there as the coverage goes to Orange side. This is first down. It's in the hands of Bush. It's in the hands of Devery Henderson, the former LSU Tiger, in the end zone in the Louisiana Superdome. Touchdown, New Orleans. Watch number nine. Throws the block. Terrific job. You know, I know that there are social issues we should talk about here and, and cultural issues, but what a start by New Orleans for a football game they want to win. They get a score on a block punt. They get a score on a double reverse. The, the crowd is waiting to explode. Gets a chance twice early. Quarterback with a bad shoulder Couldn't throwing a block. Couldn't write it any better. He could not. Extra point added by Carney to make it 14 to 3. And Susie's on the sideline with a special New Orleans guest. Susie. Archie Manning has lived here in New Orleans since he was drafted by the Saints 35 years ago. Archie, tonight is about rebirth and also reality. What would you say is the state of the New Orleans community now? Well, just excited. Uh, so the great anticipation of uh, this day coming. You know, we kind of look for good news here, and uh, this is a good news day. I think. I think we all want to get back, and we want to. We want to get. You know, everybody wants their home back, their business back. But we've got something back today. We got our building back, and we got our football team back. So that's good news. How do you express what the Saints mean to this community? Well in a lot of places, college towns and, and some pro places, it's really the pulse of the community, especially during the fall. I mean, what happens on Sunday kind of dictates people's personality for, for a week or so. And I think especially now that everybody's been depressed, everybody's been through some tough times, and we're kind of looking for the Saints to give us some joy and happiness. 
What can people do who are watching to help? What can people still do to help this community? Well, there, there's still a lot of projects. Uh, there's, you know, we, we got a, we got a lot of problems. There's still a lot of projects. There's charitable things. The nonprofits who don't, you know, were struggling before really have problems now. So it, it's easy to find a good project to help. Thanks for joining us, Archie. Thanks, thanks for being here. Susie, thank you. The kick return by Atlanta brings it out to about the 40-yard line. Jarius Norwood returned it. An injured New Orleans Saint on the play. The injured player, Ninkovich, limped off, didn't put any power on his right leg. Vic and the Falcons take over from the 44. And no running room. And his early going has been all Charles Grant, the New Orleans defense, and the Saints with a couple of big plays. It's striking what has happened so far. A team scores on a block punt. A team scores on a double reverse. They hold Atlanta pretty well on defense. And you hear the crowd explode with glee. And I know we're going to talk about the hard times that are here because you can't ignore it. But you almost get the feeling that the people here want to ignore it a little bit and just celebrate the fact that their football team is doing something that they haven't seen in over a year. After no game, second and 10, Warwick Dunn scores through the hole and gets to the 48-yard line. Here's Michelle. Guys, D'Angelo Hall has a left calf injury. His return is questionable. He's in quite a bit of pain on the sidelines. Saturday night, he got a text message from a buddy, Deion Sanders, who said, how bad do you want it? I know you're tired, sore, and unsatisfied, but your family, kids, friends, teammates, and fans are depending on you. 60 minutes is all you have. He may not have those 60 minutes, guys. Yeah, Hall has uh, become friendly with Dion, and the former Falcon returned to the Falcons' camp this summer to work with the DBs, part of that relationship that has grown and continues via text message. Third and six, Vic for Crumple. Broken up again, Scott Fujita, who's been a lot of places in this first quarter, fourth down. You have to be very impressed with the job that Gary Gibbs, their defensive coordinator, has done. Michael Vick has had no passes where a defender hasn't been on top of his receivers. It's almost like the defense knows where he wants to go with the football. Hayden's first punt was 56. His first attempted punt was blocked for the opening touchdown. Now with Lance Moore back deep to receive, we'll see if Hayden can pin the Saints inside their own 20. He cannot. 52-yard punt. The net 32. Drew Brees and the Saints takes over in this battle of 2-0 teams at the 20. Fake to Bush. Throw to Colston. And the third-to-last player taken in the draft gains by the Saints have scored two touchdowns in the first quarter at home for the first time in eight years. Bush twisted a yard shy of the first down. Massive Brady Jackson brings him down. One of the things that we heard from the Atlanta players was the notion that everybody would root against them. I mean, they didn't say it with any anger. They understood the emotion of this moment, the New Orleans Saints coming back home for the first time in 14 months. And I think outside of Atlanta, that's probably true. Right now, the New Orleans Saints are not just a team to a lot of people. They're a cause. And I think people are happy to see them do well. Their coach told them at the start of the season, you have a chance to do something no team's ever done. Represent a city as they try to come back. Second quarter here in the Louisiana Superdome. Reopened and looking brighter and better than it's ever looked. 14-3. Saints leading the Falcons. Mike Tirico, Tony Kornheiser, Joe Theismann in the booth. Michelle Tafoya, Susie Colbert down on the sideline. Of course, our Monday Night Countdown crew on hand. So glad that you have joined us for a unique and memorable evening of Monday Night Football. Reggie Bush and Deuce McAllister have been splitting the load. That time McAllister lined up in the backfield. A penalty marker down as pushing and shoving goes on on the back end of that run to the 46. Flag not related to the post play pushing. Holding offense number 70. 10 yard penalty, repeat third down. Left tackle Jamal Brown's penalty wipes away an 18 yard gain. You'll see a lot of movement from the New Orleans Saints going one direction, coming back the other. One of their big concerns was the speed of the Atlanta Falcon defense, one of the fastest in the league. So what you want to do is get, him, get them running in one direction, cause them to chase and go back. That's what happened. You saw the 
Wide receiver come around behind. Deuce McAllister takes it up the middle and gashes the defense. So after the penalty, we'll have third and 10 back at the 20. Breeze fakes it one way, has it knocked down by Michael Boley. And incomplete. Breeze knew he could grab it and catch it and run with it. Couldn't get there. And it's fourth down. Why? Why would he want to do that? <laughs> That's probably why That's I let it go. That's exactly what went through his mind. Why would I want to do this? That's the second time the Atlanta Falcons have come up with a batted ball on third down. Weatherford earned the job as punter with Mitch Berger, who was around but had a groin injury all throughout preseason and was placed on injured reserve. So the rookie line drive here. Falcons uh, return man Rossum says get away from it. And what results is a 43-yard punt with no return. So the Falcons will take over at the 37. And Vic reads what the defensive end is doing, gives it to Ward Dunn, who gets a first down and again. Of a dozen yards. You know, so much of the New Orleans story, Warwick Dunn in Sports Illustrated a year ago called out his fellow players of the National Football League. An open letter, he said, You and I, the players of the NFL, can afford this kind of contribution. If we all give $5,000, we'll have raised eight and a half million, and that's a neighborhood of rebuilt homes, a new school. It's real. It'll help. It can change lives. Well, some players have contributed, not to the level Dunn had hoped, the eight and a half million dollars, but Warwick Dunn, who has been such a great humanitarian in this league, called his fellow players out publicly to do what he has been doing. And there he gains six yards. Michelle Zafoya has more on Warwick Dunn. Well, last night, Mike, Warwick Dunn hired three cars to take him and 25 Falcon players and staffers on a 90-minute tour of the Ninth Ward. They all wanted to see for themselves up close what Hurricane Katrina actually has left behind. And they watched it, looked at it in awe. Today, Warwick Dunn said the tour was one word, surreal. And Stuart Scott pointed out on the pregame, Michelle, Warwick didn't want cameras to go. That was not a thing to be seen by everybody. It's something he personally wanted to do. Falcons are back up Ball five start. here. Offense, number 65. Five yard penalty. Third down. We have, we have all, the three of us at least, have taken a tour in one form or another of some of the most hardest hit areas in New Orleans. In the lower ninth ward, what you see often, because the houses have been carted away, what you see is a couple of steps up concrete leading to where a porch used to be. You pass nine or 10 of them, they're almost like un unmarked gravestones in a graveyard of a community that no longer exists. Flag of five, back to second and 10. Right back in the belly of Dunn. And he gets back across midfield to the 48-yard line where third down will come up. That's the third time they've run that read option, for lack of a better description. They spent some time with people from the University of Ohio State University. They coaches came in, took a look. You see Michael's going to read the end person on the line of scrimmage. If there's a hold, he's going to give it. If not, he'll keep it and turn outside. Puts a lot of pressure on that end man, whether it's a linebacker or a defensive end. Vic is two of nine passing. Two of ten. Will Smith out of the Ohio State University knocked it down. He's missed his last six passes. Michael sits in the pocket. Will Smith coming outside around Gandy. Both were Saints. Will Smith, one of those guys, has had two sacks so far this year. Eight and a half last year. The speed part of that defense is their defensive This is line. what the first two opponents of the Falcons were unable to do, to make Michael Vick pass, and he ran all day. He and done. And Michael Canning's punch will be fair caught by Moore at the 15-yard line. Those images, those still images, have more power and so much uh, of a different light. You just are reminded the moments in time and how painful they were as people try to come back and try to get some energy back in their city and their lives from their football team. First down run with Reggie Bush. The ball comes out 
Jamal Brown falls on it, and it was, in fact, uh, ruled on the field a fumble and a recovery by the Saints out there at the 23-yard line. Well, one of the uh, many pieces of very, very good work done about the hurricane was done by this man, the great Spike Lee, whose uh, Thank you. documentary that aired on HBO when the levees broke is four hours, 20 minutes, and you can't stop watching it. Spike, it's uh, great to have you here on this very historic night. Historic night. I've been a lot of sporting and events, and this is one of the greats I've been. I mean, it's exciting. My hair's running. It's a great night. Here's the second down run for Deuce McAllister, who breaks into the secondary, and McAllister's out to the 45-yard line. A pickup of 22 for Deuce. That's a real nice job by the left side of the offensive line. Jamal Brown, number 70, Jamar Nesbitt. They just collapse. And what you see is Alan Rossum, as he comes along the formation, trying to stay with Reggie Bush, just takes himself out. And then Big Deuce lowers the shoulder when he can't go any further, lets everybody know that the knee is okay. Remember when people were worried that Deuce McAllister would get no carries because Reggie Bush would get them all? And they've been splitting time, splitting carries the whole season so far. On first down from the 45, back to McAllister, who gains about a yard and a half. Spike the documentary. Why did you do it? There, I'm, I'm a filmmaker, and I just wanted to give the people in New Orleans a chance to speak to a camera and tell their story. I didn't want to narrate. I didn't want, I didn't want to put my stuff on the camera. I just wanted to put the people, the great cities of New Orleans, and tell their story, and that's what we did. Of all the things you saw, all the heartbreaking things and all the things that gave you some joy, I'm sure, what one stands out the most for you in that long process? Just the courage of the people, how they continue. And I don't want to sound like a doomsayer, but a year later, it's not right here. It's still not right. Here's McAllister, shy of midfield. No third down coming up. Being from New York, there are a lot of teams that you can root for, and we know who you affiliate with. <laughs> but did you, did you come up with a sense as to why the Saints are so important to this community, that a game like this could be, in fact, so uplifting? It might not be in other cities. Just all they have, really. So it's four hours, then back to your FEMA trailer. And that's not, that's not nice. The power of sports impresses you with what it can do? Yes, it can bring everybody together, and you just got to build on what's happening here tonight. Third down here as New Orleans tries to make the most of that McAllister play. Falcons back off to zone, and Breeze comes underneath, complete to Marcus Colston. Here's a guy right up your alley. He's a guy from Hofstra. The third to last player taken in the draft became a rookie starter. He's done a terrific job first down at the 40 yard line. New York. Reggie Bush. Uh, here's an individual who's being asked to do a lot. What's your impression of how much Reggie has done for the community? Uh, they're putting a lot of, a lot of stuff on Reggie's shoulder. But uh, he's been great and he's really taken a four position and trying to galvanize the people and using his celebrity to raise the money and help the people here in this great city. We've seen so many of those charitable acts, and we'll continue to show you some of those as the night goes on. On first down, Breeze pumps left, comes back right. It was high, but Joe Horn went up to get it. May have hurt. May have gotten hurt on that. He sure did. 17 yards as Joe comes down. And peels himself off the turf. If there's anybody that is symbolic of what the Saint fans appreciate, it's what Joe Horn has done yes. in his time here. In the 11 years that he has played in different places here, he just shows it to, lands dead on his back, gets hit right in the butt, and, and he'll lay for a second, but he knows this is just too big. I can't be hurt. And he basically is the kind of guy that just wills himself places. I agree. The fans just fired up tonight. McAllister inside the tackles goes to the 18 yard line. Spike, you're in a situation here where you see what the power of sports can do right. for almost 100,000 people, 70,000 or whatever. But you've seen the depressing elements as well. Right. 14 months later, houses not just not rebuilt, not even gutted yet. Are you optimistic or pessimistic with everything you see tonight as opposed to what's outside? Go ahead, Spike. <laughs> Tell the truth. Come on. 
I'm not gonna pull a Kanye up here. <laughs> Put it out there. No, no Kanye West tonight for me, folks. America. Politically correct Spike Lee. I didn't know that I'd ever say that. Poston drops the pass there. It's tough to catch. I'm assuming you'd like to see more done. Is that okay? Yes. All right. Yes. I mean, it's a great city, and I just can understand why we cannot help our own American citizens. Why it took five days to come help our own American citizens. So, and yet a year later, there are lots of things to do. But when you look at the downtown area, right. the business people want everybody to come. They want businesses to come back, conventions to come back. This is what this dome can be. It can be the center of economics. Well, needless to say, it's a very split and very complex story without black and white answers and a lot of issues still to be raised. The flag is down here on third down. We're spiking it. Nick season revving up here in a month, so I know you're ready to get back to uh, the uh, garden. Well, first, the Yankees are going to win the World Series. Oh, okay. we got to go to the World Series with the Yankees first. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then you get to basketball. Then we go to basketball. Well, again, your uh, documentary that HBO aired and is on HBO and their uh, ability right. to go get stuff on a selective basis. Uh, right. When the levees broke, really, it's four hours and 20 minutes of the most gripping television. Uh, pleasure to have you up here. Thank you. Thank you. You guys are doing a great job. We're not going to let him go without asking Isaiah. about Isaiah. Thanks. Thanks. Is Isaiah the savior? Come on now. You have to answer that Potential one, coach of the year. You heard it right here. Isaiah Thomas. Big and shoes. I'm, and I haven't been smoking. Big, <laughs> big shoes. You and you're a guy Spike. who knows about shoes. <laughs> Isaiah, Isaiah Thomas, of course. The New York Knicks who took over from Tony's friend Larry Brown. Exactly. That'll be a story to watch in New York. Meantime, here, after the play was stopped, it stays as third and six from the 19-yard line. Breeze is pressured, throws incomplete. Fans want to flag and get it. But the Falcons are saying, Joey, that it was deflected. Yeah, after the ball is tipped at the line of scrimmage, you can hit a receiver. Now the officials are doing an excellent job of conferring. Ed Hockley and his crew do a real nice job of communicating. You have the police, the official police, that keep the players away. And then you have a group of two or three that meet and discuss it. You see the, the line of <laughs> officials keeping the Falcon players away. And That's Rod almost as many assistant coaches as some teams have. Brooking, Keith Brooking was defending Reggie Bush, and Jim Mora wants to know why the deflection didn't negate the pass interference. There he is holding on to him. But the Falcons all believed that that ball was tipped at the line of scrimmage, as does Jim Mora. And he's going to uh, throw his red challenge flag here. And Hockley will come over for the conversation with Moore. He says 75. Rod Coleman. Is challenging a ruling on the field. The ball was not touched before the pass interference. Okay, Ed Hockley has gone under the hood for 60 seconds. Watch the uh, replay, and here's the call on the challenge by Atlanta that the pass interference should be negated because of the deflection. There's no question that the ball was tipped. The question in his mind has to be when. The ball was tipped by defensive player number 75 before the pass interference. Therefore, there is no foul on the play by rule. It will therefore be an incomplete pass. It's fourth and six on the 19. No timeouts are charged to Atlanta. And Atlanta loses one of its challenges. The rare successful challenge. Joe, explain. Rod Coleman, number 75. Once this ball is tipped, any contact that Brookings has with Reggie Brown doesn't count. And that was a heck of a play by Rod Coleman. Staying at the line of scrimmage and just reading Drew Brees' eyes. Here's the home run point, Joe. The timing of all that. Tip, free, pass interference, thus flag negated. And as I said, Jim Moore, who uses replay at, with as little success as almost anyone in terms of head coaches, <laughs> he does. finally gets one to go. Uh, his way that is now the 18th challenge and the fourth on-field call overturned uh, That is one of the lower rates of coaches one of the five lowest among the 45 head coaches who've had 10 challenges and not just that Dan Reeves Who he followed Reeves had a bad record and his dad Jim Mora had a bad replay record But he got one right <laughs> John Carney 37 yard field goal 
Saints lead by 14. All of the external forces have obviously been explained in our significant storylines. Just from the pure football perspective, I don't think anybody really knew how good New Orleans was. They are 2-0. They won two road games. You never take that away in the NFL. But they won against Cleveland and Green Bay. Certainly not teams that come in with a high profile or high expectations for this season. The Falcons have just run over everyone. They've only rushed for 41 yards thus far in the game. And find themselves trailing by 14 points here in the second. Kickoff return by Jarius Norwood, the rookie out of Mississippi State. Shown the sideline at the 42 and a 15-yard flag tacked on as Curtis Deloach got too intense. And his head coach, Sean Payton's right there to tell him, you can't do that. Or something to that effect. Well, Sean Payton explained to him, <laughs> in a game like this, when you have all the momentum in the world, he's out of bounds. Now you take and throw him. That's just stupid. I mean, you're a third-year player. You're not some First young guy. First of all, unnecessary roughness by the kicking team, number 39. Threw him to the ground out of bounds. 15-yard penalty. Atlanta's ball. First down. And, Joe, you can see why his frustration was there, because as Norwood is going to stiff arm him, he's up by the headgear of Deloach. I don't care. I don't care about frustration. You have to use your head at this level. You can't, in a game like this, with all the emotion, you can't let your emotions get the best of you. Doesn't matter who's, you know, runners can straight arm and grab face masks. It mm -hmm. doesn't matter. Michael Vick is two of ten passing. He's missed his last six. What a great opportunity here. As Vick loads up and throws incomplete. Roman Harper, the safety, read that read option very well. Second and ten. Vick has space. Fakes out Fujita, but good pursuit by Hollis Thomas, the former Philadelphia Eagle. Third down coming up. They run on third and five. And they're going to come up a yard shy with the Justin Griffith carry. The fullback getting just his second effort as a ball carrier. I wouldn't be surprised if Jim Mora goes for it here. He has such supreme confidence in his running game. And you've got Fred McCrary coming in. You've got Warwick Dunn coming in. You've got a guy who's quick, who can make moves, and a big battering ram in front of him. And just from a football strategy point, from here it would be a 51-yard field goal, likely out of the range of Morton Anderson just added. You'd have to go back to Keenan for a long field goal attempt here. And New Orleans is going to take a timeout to discuss fourth and one. Considering Although Morton Anderson says that his leg is so lively having sat out for a year or so <laughs> that he can bomb him from 50. He also said though he made it a big joke about his age 46. He said they took blood from me the other day and dust came out. That's a pretty funny line. You know this game and this night was full to the top of the cup with storylines when Anderson announced this week that he was coming back and the Falcons signed him. It was just a. Uh, one more because so many different roads and paths converging here tonight and so much of the story in a football game we talk about the fans the atmosphere when the game starts the fans aren't part of the story or the stadium really isn't it can get loud make uh, communication tough but the people are so much a part of the story tonight because the joy on their faces I was walking through the concourse when we got here and people were just so thrilled to be back looking around at this building and we have our building back they've this waited an awfully long time for their team to come back to this city how much it means to the city the chance to finally have something good to cheer about which they haven't had and when they go outside they don't necessarily have it either. Fourth and one. And they will choose to throw it and complete it to Algie Crumpler, tackled by Josh Bullock's first down at the 16. <laughs> exactly what you didn't think would happen. Flag down deep in the secondary. Let's check the flag. That's a clutch catch. Good coverage again. But Mr. Clutch manages to pull it in, Algie Crumpler. He dropped an early touchdown pass. He's certainly not going to drop another one. 
12 men on the field, defense. The penalty is declined. The play results in a first down. <laughs> and that was after a timeout. Right. Remember, that was after a timeout that the New Orleans Saints wound up with too many guys on the field. Scott Fujita was trying to call timeout down there, did not get it. Meantime, for Vic, it's the first time uh, back since 2002 that he had gone seven attempts in a row without a completion. That stopped at a very opportune time, taking Atlanta back into the red zone. Slips as he tries to cut back Charles Grant, 50 year man out of Georgia, former first round pick. There's a tremendous amount of pressure on the perimeter players on the defensive line Will Smith and Charles Grant, as well as Scott Fajita. 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 Food on line. <laughs> Hungry? Yes, I am. What they have to do is continue to channel Michael Vick, Warwick Dunn, Norwood back into the run support, and the backside can't get too antsy. Three receivers come close to you. The tight end crumplers at the top of the screen. And the throw out to the big guy. Crumpler tries to make a man miss and a good down low tackle by Fred Thomas off the corner. Josh Bullock, another one of those draft choices. Second round pick out of Nebraska last year. With the trials and tribulations that these Saints went through, a lot of young guys had to play. A lot of people were hurt. And it's incredible what they did, the places they practiced in, the buses that they had to get on to go eat, to go shower, to go lift. Jim Haslett really did a great job last year just getting these guys to dress. Thank you for correcting me, Joe. Bullets on the tackle, not Thomas. Third and seven. Vic now dancing out, wafting it complete to Griffith. And he is shy of the end zone down at the two yard line. There isn't another quarterback in the National Football League that can make that play. Michael Vick is so unique that he can step up and everybody thinks he's going to run. And then he throws it in reverse very quickly and it puts a little touch on it. You see him jump up inside. Will Smith thought he had him. All of a sudden he was gone. Jarius Norwood winds up with a big reception. It's got to be the nightmare scenario, Joe. You can XO and game plan, and then he does something that they haven't put on film before. Especially down here around the goal line where you have to make quicker decisions. Timeout uh, taken here by Atlanta. And, you know, the coaches are going to have to really work on their 40 times and their flag throwing and the challenges. They had to come all the way down well, to get the timeout second. there. It's a 30-second timeout. Remember going back to what we saw the opening night of the season with Nick Saban and that flag and everybody's now said hey you got to make sure you throw your flag. Well the Falcons and I believe it was Jim Moore had to sprint all the way down to the referee at the five yard line the official at the five yard line that, to get the time. That's call. why it would be good to hire as an assistant coach someone like Theismann who can still throw the flag okay. at great distance to make sure the referees are aware of it. That's right. You got like 20 something coaches so now you're going to have your designated replay flag thrower and the guy who sprints to go get the line judge. Because you <laughs> can. Side judge. There's, there's no cap on assistance. That's right. You can keep yeah. paying. <laughs> Michael Vick has to be very careful with the exchange because it's very loud and the center's going to have to make some big steps so he's got to be careful to get the ball. Ex-center Eric Beverly now at tight end came in motion. Vic struck down. Brian Young, the seventh year veteran with the sack. That's Brian Young's fourth sack in the first three games. Little play action fake. That's what happens when you slide, get rid of the center, and make the play. Can't run away from everything, can you? As long can't as, run away from everything. As long as the ends box you in, those big guys right. will eat you alive. You mentioned that's his fourth sack in two and a half games. He had 13 in his first six years in the NFL. Second and goal. In the belly of Dunn. To the seven and to the two-minute warning as Young made that tackle. Flag down here before the two-minute warning. It was thrown back in the secondary. That's the two-minute warning. Two minutes. All right. Maybe the flag just slipped out. Third and goal for Michael Vick and the Falcons, trailing by 14. Four in the pattern, and Vick throws. It is deflected and incomplete. Intended for Lalee. Fred Thomas on the coverage. Field goal attempt coming up. 
Michael Vick has had absolutely no place to put the football to his receivers. Nice job by Fred Thomas on Ashley Lalee. He tries to throw to the back shoulder, but Fred Thomas just didn't give him enough room to be able to make the throw. You know what some of this proves, Joe? Is that both teams have coaches. That the other team is watching what you've done well, and they're coming up with something to stop. They call that film. Tom, film. That's what they look at. Lots of it. Gordon Anderson, good from 26, is blocked on this 25-yard attempt. What a night it's been for the special teams. Josh Bullocks, the safety, came in to get that. And Joe DiCamillis, the special teams coach, uh, his crew has had a tough first half. We knew that his range was 26 at least, so you had to figure 25 was good. But you have to get it airborne. Number 29, the second on the right, Josh Bullock. You'll see him come inside. Terrific angle. Looked an awful lot like the punt block, where the guy making the block is right in front of the kicker. Nice job leaping through, making the block. So a couple of protection breakdowns, and look at the same sideline. How good do you feel if you're a member of the New Orleans Saints, if you're a fan of the New Orleans Saints, if you have plugged into this story, obviously, about Katrina and said to yourself, they could use a little bit of good luck. How good do you feel right now? And with two timeouts, I don't believe Sean Payton's going to go into a, a shell. I think you come out and you run the ball, see what you can get, and you try and get into a field goal position. Atlanta has one timeout left. Just McAllister takes it to the 18-yard line. With Jason Webster and Lawyer Malloy there on the tack. Tough half for Vic, who has missed on 10 of his 15 passes and has been so effective running only two attempts for nine yards. I will say this. Where Michael Vick has tried to throw the football to his receivers, I don't know if any quarterback in the league would have been able to complete them. The Saints have been right on top of him, and the field has negated the speed of the Atlanta Falcons. Second and five from the 18. Breeze throws complete to Colston. And the first down from Marcus. Here's Michelle Tafoya. Mike, after the blocked field goal attempt, I mean, the looks in the players' eyes on this Falcons sideline instantly changed. There was a look of shock, of being stunned. Jim Moore told us he believed his players were matured enough to handle this environment. They all thought they were prepared for it. But I'm not sure they knew exactly what they were getting into, guys. Well, Michelle, it's an interesting point. They've also forgotten, Michelle, that the Saints aren't what they were a year ago. This is a 2-0 football team also. And they equal their three win total all year. Reggie Bush right at the first down line. And we'll see here with 59 seconds. And Peyton continuing to let the clock run. You can, you can talk about that, how they're a 2-0 football team, and that's all well and good. But they're scoring on trick plays. They're batting down, you know, kick attempts and, and stuff like that. Everything works for them right now. Everything. Right back to Reggie. To the 39. And now that uh, first down in tow and comfortable range here. Peyton's going to take a timeout out of the shadow of the goalpost at the 39. Susie? Mike, when Sean Payton took this job, he knew he would have to change the culture, and that meant a total overhaul. 24 players on the roster tonight that weren't here last year. Tight end Ernie Conwell told us how he appreciates that, that this is a team of good men. And he shared with us the way Peyton conveyed the message during training camp. He held up a banner from 2004, the U.S. Olympic basketball team, a group of superstars who weren't very successful. Sean said, it's not always the most talented group of men. It's the right group of men. That's what it takes to be successful. Susie, that 2004 U.S. Olympic basketball team that had just an awful time in Athens. You remember the losses that they took to, to Puerto Rico, Argentina, and Lithuania two years after the U.S. fell on its face in the World Championships in Indianapolis. Bush screen. Reggie to the sideline to 41. Here New Orleans, one timeout. 33 seconds and operating from their own 42. Yeah. 
Flag down as Breeze's pass intended for Devery Henderson is incomplete. That's going to be against Jamal Brown, the left tackle, moving a little too quick. Illegal formation offense. Number 70 lined up in the backfield. Oh. Five-yard penalty, repeat second down. He wants to be a running back. He broke that line of helmets there that you have to maintain to not get that. Well, the Falcons against the Panthers and Buccaneers combined those teams, only ran it for 105 yards, and no touchdowns. Atlanta came into this third week of the year, one of three teams not to allow a touchdown. Well, tonight, New Orleans has already run for 75 yards, and two touchdowns scored, really one allowed by the defense, one coming on the special teams play. It was the first touchdowns allowed uh, by Atlanta all year, keeping safe the 1937 Bears, who were the last team in NFL history to go three games without a touchdown being scored upon them. Baltimore, Denver, and Atlanta had a chance to take them out of the books this week, and if not. I think I rooted for them when I was small, the 37 Bears. Run off the clock. The clock should read 28 seconds. 28 seconds. Five-second runoff on the penalty on New Orleans. And while we have a second, you can look at the numbers from this first half. They need to pick up 40 more yards, the Saints do, to give Carney an opportunity at a 50-yard field goal. And one timeout in 28 seconds to try to accomplish that. And a handoff inside to Bush, gets to the edge. Can't get out of bounds as Reggie's taken down at the 49-yard line. And New Orleans takes its final timeout. Reggie is so electric. The short steps, when he cuts, he doesn't get his legs out away from his body. He cuts with his legs <laughs> underneath his body. See I the would difference? Hope so. The difference is he's a high stepper. His knees go up and down. They don't slide out. Tall receivers have a little opportunity. Uh, uh, the big guys have it more difficult. How do you like those gold shoes he's wearing tonight? New ones. Yeah. Well, guys, Reggie Bush, of course, was in the news because of what happened when he was at USC as an eligible student athlete while playing at USC. Did Reggie and his family accept financial benefits from potential agents, try to sign him once he turned pro? If that happened, then it's an NCAA violation, national championship, and the Heisman come into question. Uh, they question who paid for several things, including a hotel stay and a used car for Reggie. Ten days ago, there was an investigative story. Reggie's attorney, we met with him yesterday, knocked down some of the claims. Breeze here with 19 seconds, pitches it to Bush, who runs to the sideline and gets there at the 49-yard line to stop the clock. Mathis took a shot at Joe Horn, and that was a bad penalty. Adds 15 yards, and the Saints are going to be very close to field goal range. And Joe Horn has to be careful not to get it back as he goes mouth-to-mouth -mouth with D'Angelo Hall. Both of these teams are wrapped up in the emotion of the night. And the emotion After the play rivalry. was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, defense number 23, 15-yard penalty, first down. You see after Good block by him. Joe Horn. Now he comes back and pushes him. Joe Horn's protecting his partner. He's protecting his running back. Now, Joe is never one not to finish a conversation. So speaking he's going to say something. Yeah, speaking of finishing, let me finish the Reggie Bush story. We talked with Reggie's agent yesterday. He again poked some holes in some of the claims that were in that printed story from Yahoo Sports Online. We asked if they're going to cooperate with the Pac-10 or the NCAA investigation. He said there's litigation still out there potentially. So they'll consider cooperating with that investigation only if it's in Reggie's best interest. So that cleans up some of the Reggie Bush story that has been out there. Really not a lot to advance the story at this point. Breeze, no timeouts left, throws incomplete. What, what does stay out there, though, is, is the notion, the possibility that Reggie Bush's family accepted either fr you know, free rent for some long period of time last year, the house that they were moved out of when the story first broke. And you have to identify, were they ever charged rent? If they were, how did they pay rent? That sort of hangs out there, and that would be an improper benefit in most people's eyes, and if that were the case. Yeah, and it's a college football story, because that's the impact. Yes. It's not a story down here in New Orleans because of all the things Reggie has reached out to the community at their time of need before playing a game in here.
Final seconds, Breeze without timeouts, has to be the sidelines, and they almost lost yardage on the pass to Henderson. From, so from here, you're looking at a 51-yard field goal attempt with five seconds left, and all Henderson can do is say, hey, I had to get out of bounds, gaining or losing. No point not trying. 51, no point. 51 is a makeable distance for John Carney in preseason. He, or excuse me, in pregame, he kicked a 53-yarder. So John Carney, this uh, fountain of kicking youth tonight at age 42, <laughs> with Morton Anderson on the other side, comes out to attempt this field goal at the back end of the half. It's the oldest two kickers since the Rockettes had a reunion from the 1945 <laughs> Rockettes. From 51. Online, is it long enough? You betcha. <laughs> As everything go right right now for the New Orleans Saints in their first game here in 14 months. As we begin the third quarter here in the reopened Louisiana Superdome, Susie Paul from Michelle Tafoya on the field, Mike Tirico, Tony Kornheiser, Joe Theismann in the booth, Michael Keenan kicking off for the Falcons, and Aaron Stecker will take it two yards deep to the end zone. Hurdling a tackle and makes the man miss and brings it out to the 25 yard line where Fred McCrary, the fullback, makes the stop. The delay after the kickoff and before the first play, John Leak was shaken up for the Falcons. He walked off under his own power. On first down, Breeze throws complete to Marcus Colston again, turns down, tackles, and takes it into Falcons territory. First down, gain of 29. Marcus Colston is such a wonderful story. A seventh round draft choice. Everybody liked him. They liked him in the third. They liked him in the fourth. They liked him in the fifth. Nobody could pull the trigger on him. Finally, they must have loved him in the seventh. Oh, they absolutely did. He finally, <laughs> you know, at a hostel, they felt like all he could do was run the bubble screen in college and run fast. But with each day in practice, he got better and better. Sean Payton, quoting his old coach Bill Parcells, Bill taught us unbias yourself as to how we acquired the player. You look at a guy who was a, a very low draft choice, you say, how could he become a starter? Drew Brees and his wife, Brittany, after they found out New Orleans was their new football home, uh, they have infused themselves into this city, purchasing a home in the, the uptown area, the truly New Orleans area, where Archie and Olivia Manning, the first football couple of uh, this city, still call home. Brees pumps deep, gets it to McAllister to the 39-yard line. Three shy of a first down. If you look at the uh, numbers here for the first 31 minutes, Breeze, 14 of 20, a very efficient night. McAllister averaging right around six and a half to carry. And Reggie Bush has touched it from scrimmage 10 times, averaging just under five per touch. And also, you have to be impressed with the offensive line of the New Orleans Saints. All five are new starters. And Drew Breeze went through this in San Diego a few years back when they started a whole new group. And they're starting to gel. They've done a terrific job giving him a chance to stand back there and throw the ball. McAllister runs for a first down. Michael Boley and Demario Williams made the tackle. And we should reiterate that Atlanta's without two starters on defense here again tonight. Ed Hartwell, their middle linebacker, out with both knees that were scoped in late August. They hope to get him back next week. Same true for the pass rushing defensive end, John Abraham who is back in Atlanta missing his second game with a groin injury. When we came into this game, you wondered aloud, everybody did, how good was New Orleans? The New Orleans players wondered that as well. Ernie Conwell said on a scale of 10, we're a six. This will be a real good gauge for where we're at. They're above a six right now. Good job just to make sure that the handoff was successful there. Keith Brooking making the tackle. The best way to defend Michael Vick is what the Saints are doing now, is having him standing on the sidelines watch. In the first two games, the Atlanta Falcons had an advantage in time of possession by 10 minutes, roughly 35 to 25. When you look at this game, I'm sure that the balance goes in favor of the Saints, and that's another factor, Tony. We're talking about all the things that are going their way to be able to control the line of scrimmage and run the ball. Vic certainly does not look happy sitting there. Joe Horn in motion. Breeze to Horn. First down, 13 yard line. Who 
says you have to be 6'5 to play quarterback in the National Football League? Joe Horn finds the soft belly of the defense right behind the linebackers, right in front of Lawyer Malloy. Wonderful lane to throw the football for Drew Brees. Horn, who had a disappointing year last year, in part the injury that he suffered, a hamstring, certainly in large part the difficult circumstances the Saints took the field with every week. Bush. This is the 12. The ball came out, but the whistle, as you heard, had already sounded. Those are the type of plays, Michael, that the coaches want to see Reggie Bush run. They don't want to have him try and turn every play into a highlight. Sometime you have to put your head down, take the two or three yards, and then go back and do it again. The discipline to run inside as well is only going to benefit him as he matures and grows into this game. Carol Hodge was talking about that on our Monday Night Sports Center early this afternoon. Keep your team on schedule. Second and eight, much better than second and 13 when you try to make the home run play. Breeze has to take a second time out in this drive. And for those of us who've been to Final Fours and Super Bowls and other events in this city, Bourbon Street looks just like Bourbon Street used to look. And the natives want you to yeah. come here. They need the money. They need the help. They want the tourist dollar they've always been able to depend on. Second and eight out of the second call timeout by the Saints on this drive. Breeze quick time. Colston caught it at the five. Jason Webster makes the tackle to set up third and two. You take advantage of somebody that's 6'4 and 230 pounds. Those are the kind of things that he caught in college. The real quick. I'm very impressed with the way he catches the ball in his hands. He as doesn't, opposed to, as opposed to letting it get. No, not his feet. <laughs> body. With, with the body. Oh, I've been around this game long enough. He's a hobster kid. Come on, I'm a Long Island boy Remember, myself. Have, of course yeah, I'm rooting for him. You have to keep your feet underneath you. Remember that. <laughs> Deuce McAllister in the backfield. Mike Carney, the fullback, leads the way. McAllister, first down and goal. This is domination by the Saints offensive line. Jari Evans, a, a rookie, fourth round pick playing right guard. Jamal Brown, a second year guy, new position left tackle. They're just moving him off the ball. Grady Jackson, big number 90, is supposed to be the anchor that doesn't allow people to be able to do what we have seen the Saints do tonight. And that out of two tight ends with Ernie Conwell and Mark Campbell out of Washington and Michigan respectively. First and goal, they anticipate Deuce. They've got Deuce. Deuce is down. Tackled by Jonathan Babineau, second year man out of Iowa. Babineau was one of the many players on this defense that started a lot last year because of injuries. And the fans react to Reggie Bush, who has not scored a touchdown as a receiver or a running back yet in the NFL. And Bush did score his first touchdown in college in his third game. Reggie Bush in a situation like this can be the guy that everybody focuses their attention to, but yet you can't ignore Ernie Conwell, the tight end. Here is Reggie, bouncing it to the outside, trying to cut back in, but he is stopped for virtually no gain. Michael Boley and Jason Webster forced third and goal. I see a lot of young running backs coming out of college and in college, and I see Reggie Bush doing this as well. When they think the whistle is blown, they're cutting the ball loose. Don't do that because one of these times the officials are not going to blow the whistle. You're going to cut it loose and you're going to fumble in a critical situation. You hold on to it as long as you can. Don't put it on the ground. Quick, call the play. Third and goal. What would you play for about? Play action. Post it in motion. It is Bush who is stopped. Time to the work. Shy of the one. And the Saints have... <laughs> An extra point size field goal here if they so choose. It would make it a 20 point lead and would force Atlanta to it. score three touchdowns. No as question. To two field goals and a touchdown. No question. You have to kick it here. You can't run the risk of losing all of the emotion and momentum that has been built up for you as the New Orleans no, Saints. No, the fans quickly, when they came out to kick, stopped chanting for them to go for it. They realized that. This is right on that two-yard mark, so it becomes an extra point 
It's worth three. Carney bangs it through. And there's a terrific drive. You come out of the locker room. You know Michael Vick salivating to get his hands on the ball. You take half the quarter, get points, and take a 20-point lead. The musical soul of the city is so present. Every alley and street you walk down, they're trying to keep it going. Allen Rawson kickoff return. Pulled down at the 25-yard line. And one of the landmarks of New Orleans, Emeralds, a lot of the wait staff is now uh, gathered to watch the football game as well. Hi to all you folks. So many of the people of New Orleans, this is a people of New Orleans night as the Saints lead by 20. First possession for the Falcons. Work done. Almost busted through. Got to the 30-yard line. Three John Carney field goals have made it 23-3. to And the Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Ray is done. And the Falcons have been stymied by New Orleans here tonight. Third down coming up. The interior line of the New Orleans Saints has really done a terrific job handling the zone blocking concept of the Falcons. Hollis Thomas in the middle, number 99. Brian Young either seems to be around the ball carrier or in Michael Vick's face an awful lot. Saints crowding the line. Many back in coverage. Vic from behind still able to stand in the pocket but throws incomplete for a blanketed Algie Crumpler. The Falcons have converted just two of ten third down tonight. For all Michael Vick's great talent, the picture that we see of him tonight is one of frustration as he sits on the bench. It's difficult for him to get back onto the field because the Saints possess the ball and when he does get there, he is neither running nor passing with, with anywhere near the amount of yards we have seen in the first two games from him. Meantime, uh, one of the Saints defensive backs was injured at the deep downfield on the back end of the play. The Falcon faces have been uh, frustrated faces as they sit on the sideline during the timeout. Injury to Fred Thomas, the starting corner for the Saints, but he jogged off after sitting down for about 40 seconds on the field under his own power. Falcons have had seven possessions, fourth three and out. And Michael Kanan to kick again. 50-yard kick, and here's Lance Moore from the 19. He'll take it out to the 28-yard line. Here's Susie Colbert. Well, Mike, one of the major topics of discussion around New Orleans is that a majority of the funding that went to rebuild the Superdome came from FEMA, which raised the question, why rebuild a stadium before you rebuild homes? Well, I spoke with a FEMA director today who spent five days in the Dome after Katrina. He explained the city doesn't rebound without an economic base. New Orleans survives on tourism. Ten to twelve million will be poured into the community just because this game is being played tonight. There's a delicate balance of what you do first, but what's first impacts what's second and third. Homes, schools, the police force. Before the residents can come back, people who work in the hotels and the restaurants, you have to bring business back. Tonight puts a focus back on the city in a positive way so it can turn the corner and the tourists will come back. And Susie, after we started talking about that today, as I went out to get a po' boy sandwich and just do the New Orleans lunch type things, the line at Mother's to get in, which was long, I, that's the question I took to people, Susie, because I wanted to hear from the people of New Orleans, and I asked 20, a completely random, non-scientific sample, and 20 out of 20 people said, of course we needed to rebuild the dome. If not, if the Saints go, if the Final Four doesn't come back, if a Super Bowl they hope somewhere down the line, if all those things don't come back, that's not going to show New Orleans as the city it's been for a long time. What are we going to do? Because tourism is such an important part of this city. There was a five-yard penalty on the Falcons, so New Orleans had the option, tack it on or re-kick. They choose the re-kick to see if they can get better field position. Kanan hits his best punt of the night, and it goes down at the 23-yard line. Part of New Orleans coming back is some of the music we talked about. Michelle is with one of the people instrumental on in that. Yeah, Harry Connick Jr. I mean, when you think New Orleans and you think music, you think of Harry. And tell us a little bit about Musicians Village in the Upper Ninth Ward. What is it? Well, it's the first 
and only reconstruction effort on a major level in New Orleans. And we have over 30 houses that are constructed now, three families that are there. This city was very slow to get back on its feet. And myself and Brantford Marsalis and my manager, Anne Marie Wilkins, decided we we're going to get some musicians who are the heart of the culture of the city back into town. So we started Musicians Village started with one house and we're moving on and it's it's just terrific it's right there in the heart of the lower ninth ward which is the heart of our city now as a guy who was born and raised here what is it going to take to get this place back to what you remember it being well this is probably the greatest thing that could happen is to have this great team playing in this great dome in this great city right now and this game is a great bonus but we need people to come see us we need people to spend their money here to come stay in the hotels eat at the restaurants it's my favorite city in the world, and to have people come back and visit and, and help us and boost our economy, that's really what we need right now. Now, be honest. You've been watching this game. Punt gets blocked for a touchdown. What are you thinking? I, I, don't, I, didn't, I don't even know what to say. I'm, I'm so blown away right now. I mean, this is sick. I mean, a block field goal, block punt, this is crazy, man. It's just and everybody's getting a chance to play. It's crazy. It's insane. I think the Falcons think so, too. Harry yeah. Connick, Jr., thank you so much. Good luck. Thanks. Thank you, Michelle. Reggie Bush, a run for a loss of yard. Deuce McAllister on that little screen gets the yard back. We'll have third and ten coming up with four and a half left in the third. We were talking before about FEMA putting in money to the Superdome. Uh, th there's, there's nobody in this city who is running away from all the ills of the city, all the gutted houses of the city, all the miles and miles of destruction. But what they are saying, Harry Connick said, what they all say is, we've got to start with something that builds the city back up, and the Saints mean that much to this city, as they don't in other cities where there's a multiplicity of sports teams. Third and ten, Breeze settles, throws just about a yard shy of the first down uh, to the 32-yard line. And on fourth down, they'll have to kick it away. And a little uh, instruction on the field there for the rookie Reggie. Weatherford back on to punt. Good punt. Alan Rosson from the 16. Flag down, he's down at the 22. What a boot by Weatherford. 66 yards, and let's check the flag. During the return, holding by the receiving team number 81. Half the distance to the goal, Atlanta keeps the ball, first down. If it happens in the league on Sunday, our guys, the best in the business, break it down for you, leading up to kickoff on Monday night. Vic from inside his own 10 to Crumpler at the 24, first down. You have to figure that the Atlanta Falcons have to score on every drive. The most they'll have will be four possessions in this game. They're down by 20 points. They're going to have to get touchdowns, and their defense is going to have to stand up and stop the Saints offensively. And they can't take their time. They're going to have to do it in chunks like that. 42 minutes played. Michael Vick has six completions. The Falcons, that was just their sixth first down, only one by the run. Done. Trying to make Mark Simino miss, but the man who was acquired from the Eagles in that trade we mentioned uh, with Dante Stallworth uh, brings him down after a short game. We talked about Marquez Colston, the wide receiver of the Saints. It was because of his play all through camp that Dante Stallworth became expendable. And the deal could be made to help probably the one area of this football team that needed the most defensively, the linebacker position. Yeah, remember the preseason? They told us that's the weakest position in this team, the position that concerns Sean Payton the most. Vic, across the 30 to the 31. Joe, you mentioned a few times that the field was such an issue for the fans just joining us tonight. Why is the field an issue for footing and speed of the Falcons? It's brand new grass, and the blades of the grass, be it artificial or not, are long. And the rubber that is mixed in, you can see it flying up. The field has not been matted down yet. It's a slow track. I liken it to a muddy football field under, under normal conditions. 
where you just can't get that really good footing. Third and four. Time for Vic. The deep ball for Ashley Lalee. A lot of contact. Flag comes down. Lalee and Mike McKenzie got all locked up as they were sprinting down about 35 yards from where the play happened. Let's see who the call's going to be on. When Ed Hockley tells the coach, stay there. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you look at his arms, you look at his there chest was no development. Foul for pass interference on the play. The pass is incomplete. You decide. If there was no foul, why was the flag thrown? Did, did the official not see something? That's a very zen-like question, Joe, and I don't think we're capable of answering it. Don't, don't you think, after watching that replay, that that was the right outcome at the end of the day? You know, with pass interference, Mike, you just don't know. I mean, it's body... You don't yeah. know. I mean, it's it could be, it couldn't be. When the flag is thrown, he must have seen something that caused him to take it out of his pants. Kanan's punt will go out of bounds. <laughs> the flag out of his pants. <laughs> you know, Tony, sometimes it's like having a little kid. You pretend that you didn't hear. Somebody I want to qualify yes. that, okay? Yeah. An official has taken took... a flag out of somewhere on this play as well. Yes. <laughs> it's a no commenter for me. You started laughing, though, did you? <laughs> yes, I did. And you're still laughing. Yeah, it's funny. So he's just asking the Falcons if they want to tack it on to where the ball is and push New Orleans back 10. <laughs> and while you're asking me that question, I want to know why you picked up the flag over there, Jim yeah. Moore taking that opportunity. I, I, he should ask him. <laughs> what kind of discussion could they have had? Holding by the receiving team number 27 during the kick. A 10-yard penalty is enforced from the end of the kick. First down. Something to keep in mind, in the first two games for Atlanta against Carolina and Tampa, they scored 20 points in the first game, only 14 against the Bucks. So we're not talking about an offense that's hit its stride yet that can go out and just post numbers. It's not like they're scoring 35 and 35. They're counting on their defense a lot. And Michael Vick and Warwick Dunn's running ability. Didn't, well, wait, didn't you think that the way they were running the ball as if they were operating out of an old single wing and plowing over people. Didn't you think they had a certain invincible quality as they came into this game? Didn't you think that? Yes. Okay. I did. And the Saints decided that they weren't invincible. Because of the size of the turf. I think it's a factor. And the whistle brings proceedings to a halt here. Drew Brees would like to know what's going on. Ah, that's one of those secret meetings that you never find out about. A secret meeting between the officials has just taken place. Um, I'm totally, let's go play football. I'm totally in the just get it right camp. We can conference all you want. Enough for Just get it right. And most times, although fans who care about the game with their rooting interest don't believe it, they do get it right. Reggie Bush. Games almost nine yards. Reggie Butch is proving tonight that he is not just a space player. When we say the term space, get outside, get one on one with the linebackers and the defensive backs. He's proving he can run inside. Running an awful lot like Warwick Dunn for a guy that's not real big. And you pointed them out before, Joe, an offensive line that really had a lot a lot of questions almost everybody was a move somebody in a new position and they've done a very solid job tonight McAllister right at the first down mark as we bring the third quarter to a close 
Sean Payton trying to open 3-0. Reggie Bush and the Saints have had one of those nights that you dream of in one of these situations. We're pretty close to a nightmare for Michael Vick thus far. There's going to be a measurement here, and that's why the clock is stopped with four seconds to see if there's a first down before the quarter comes to an end. So New Orleans will start first and ten at its own 34 when the fourth frame begins. Drew Brees in his first home game as a New Orleans Saint. The Saints in their first true home game in 23 games. Last year they were on the road all the time. The Saints return game here in the Louisiana Superdome. It, it just struck me just look at that image and how the images of 13 months ago are so in your mind and over time will that image of the dome and of New Orleans come back and part of it will be if you see the Saints a lot and maybe you will they're knocking on the door of three and zero oh to start the season leading by 20 with the ball as the fourth quarter begins the one in movement on the tight end Mark Campbell they say he stayed in his stance and McAllister runs close to a first down Here's Tom Benson, the owner of the Saints. There are a lot of people who felt he wanted to move out of here even before what happened with Katrina. He certainly publicly last year said that he was unhappy with the entire state of Louisiana, had an incident at one of the games. Paul Tagliabue made this happen here. In one of the last acts as commissioner of the National Football League, he made sure that the New Orleans Saints were repatriated to New Orleans. It was so important to him for that to happen that when the schedule was announced this year, Paul Tagliabue announced it outside the Superdome. We're going to have home games at the Superdome, and that franchise is here now. There may be a lot of owners in the league who think it may eventually go to Los Angeles, but Paul Tagliabue made it clear it would come back, and I believe the league wants it here for as long as possible. The Saints' current lease in the Superdome runs through 2010. It's not a long time in terms of stadium leases. Breeze pumping, throwing the deep ball for Joe Horn. D'Angelo Hall had coverage. All banged up in the first half. Has been on the field almost all of the second half. And we'll have second down coming up. As I mentioned, that lease runs till 2010. And sports in New Orleans is a long-term question with no long-term answer the short term is Tulane's football team comes back in here they played in all different stadiums last year they play here on Saturday across the walkway the New Orleans Hornets of the NBA will play a game a month here next year and still a question but intention from their owner George Shin to play here in 07 and 08. To look at this crowd tonight and this year is the first year that all the season tickets have been sold ever in the history of, of the franchise. You look at this crowd tonight and it, it, it would seem clear to most people looking from a distance that this franchise is alive and well in New Orleans right now. Now if it's something like basketball where there are 41 home games as opposed to eight only eight home games for professional football that's a different matter. But certainly you get the impression that they could support eight home games. I'll give you an example. Sean Payton talked about this being at a concert this summer and a guy comes up to him who does not have a job, does not know where he's going to live and says, Coach, I have bought six season tickets for the Saints. That's how much I believe in them. That's how much I want to be a part of this. Sean Payton was stunned at that, says that's been repeated three or four times since he's here. People without places to live, people without jobs, making a commitment to the Saints because it is the lifeblood of the community. Third and seven, and Breeze is finally brought down. That's the first pressure of the night. Kevin Mathis bringing it off a safety blitz will force a New Orleans punt. That could be the play that the Saints need to be able to get them started. They have really muddled around in a funk all night. No spark. Michael Vick has not been able to ignite them with his legs or his arm. And in this half, Joe, Atlanta's only run seven plays for 29 yards. Weatherford to punt again. 44 yard kick Russin from the 12. He hops out of bounds at 25. Susie standing by with the Dallas Mavericks head coach Avery Johnson. Susie. Well, one of the things that Sean Payton has done to try to develop this culture of winning is bring in guest speakers, and the thing they have in common is they've all won championships, and Avery, of course, led the 99 Spurs to a championship. What was the number one thing you wanted to express to this team about how to be a winner? 
where I just talked to him from the theme of seize the second of this season and just take advantage of every opportunity and know that you're not just playing for yourselves, but you're playing for a whole city. Every hang on one second. All right, Sue's his first down from the 26. And play action with Vic, who is flushed. Danson, Darton, and brought down. Good coverage, Scott Shannon. Susie. Avery, so appropriate that you're here with the team. Where exactly did you grow up? I grew up about six blocks away from the Superdome, and it's so meaningful for me to be here representing my family, my wife's family, and it's just great to be here with all of the people from New Orleans. What were the days like for you after Katrina? It was tough because I had some relatives that we couldn't contact, and uh, it was rough staying up all night wondering where, where your family is, but everybody's doing well now. It's great to hear. Great to see you. Thanks. Second down deep ball is incomplete. Michael Jenkins at six foot four tried to go up and get it like Avery's Mavericks do, but uh, well defended by Fred Thomas, who was hurt earlier in the half. Every one of the defenders, whether they're linebackers or defensive backs, have not given the receivers of the Atlanta Falcons room to breathe. You have to find some margin of error. Michael Jenkins, it would have been a difficult catch, but it's the kind of a catch you need to ignite an offense. And they're running out of time. Look at those numbers. Two to one advantage, New Orleans essentially in yards. They roll Vic left. He couldn't get his footing, but finds a way to take off. And sliding down slide shy of the 30. Scott Fujita and Mike McKenzie forced the punt. It's difficult to get completions. It's as much on the wide receivers not getting open as Michael Vick. Uh, another Canaan punt, a returnable line drive, 39 yards. Lance Moore from the 32 out of bounds. It's the 234th regular season New Orleans Saints game here in the Superdome. That is more NFL regular season games in this dome than any other in the National Football League. Obviously, you know, the, the domes have come online as time has gone on, but this is the one that has set the standard over time. McAllister, Deuce runs to the 46-yard line. He has 66 rushing yards tonight, Joe. Second and seven, Breeze, nobody open downfield, scrambles back to make a positive play out of it. You know, Drew Brees is one of those guys who was always told, you know, maybe there's a better thing elsewhere in the parking lot. Too small, not fast enough your whole career. <laughs> you know, Sean Payton said to us uh, back in August, I've seen plenty of big, fast, tall guys that can't play a lick of football. But this guy, he's a winner. He won at Westlake High School in Austin, Texas. As a matter of fact, his junior year's high school team was unbeaten. He got hurt. They didn't win the state championship. Came back, undefeated state champ. Then he goes to Purdue. Yeah, you know that, that funky offense, a lot of basketball and grass short passes. He's not big enough. Only Kentucky and Purdue recruited him. All-time leading passer in the Big Ten Rose Bowl team. Third in the Heisman voting. Here trying to keep a third down alive, and it's incomplete for Colston. And they'll have to kick it away. So that's one of the reasons Sean Payton said to us, you know, this NFL franchise is kind of a billion-dollar industry, and it's a billion-dollar jet. I feel really comfortable having that guy, 27 years old, Drew Brees, having the key to the billion-dollar jet, and he's got it to uh, two and perhaps a third win here tonight. We paid him $60 million to fly the jet. <laughs> it's good pilot pay right now. <laughs> Rossum fielding the punch at the 14. Uh, just a gain of a yard, and the special teams for New Orleans all night long. Vic is flushed, throwing on the run too high and hot for Roddy White, incomplete. We talked about Shreveport, and you know, this is a New Orleans story tonight, but Katrina, as you know, was a story that affected the entire Gulf, the neighbors to Mississippi, uh, obviously all the way across the Gulf region, the number of deaths, the estimated damage at $81 billion, and the evacuees. And I know there are a lot of people watching tonight in Houston and Birmingham and Atlanta, and especially in Baton Rouge, who used to live in New Orleans, and this used to be a place where you came. And I know a lot of you are watching tonight with heavy hearts and a lot of happiness, too, as Vic gets out of his sack, keeps it alive, 
dumps it to Algie Crumpler, who gets a first down to the 28-yard line. Mike McKenzie with the tackle. And guys, as you toured New Orleans here, these things speak so much. They just look like signs, but there's a lot to them. There are X's on many of the houses that have, have to be gutted still. At the bottom of the X, sometimes the saddest number of all reveals the dead that were found in that home. Vic throws. It is dropped by Michael Jenkins. The Atlanta receivers haven't come up tonight. Each of the houses was marked with an X, and, and that signified that someone went there from an official agency and, and saw what had happened to that house, might have referred to a pet that would be found. And again, at the bottom of the X, though, that sad number, and I saw one with five at the bottom. And those things are still clearly marked, and until the houses are removed, you will see them, as you saw in, the, in that pictures of Katrina photo essay. After the incompletion, second and ten. Vic airing it out for White. Uncatchable. Third down. Atlanta Falcons struggles on the offensive side of the ball and what about Michael Vick Warwick Dunn we haven't even called his name tonight I mean number wise he's been non-existent it's the New Orleans Saints defense never seen a defense stay this close to receivers and give them no place to throw the football can't imagine ever seeing one that everybody has been in their hip pockets Vick takes off Finally able to get a first down and more. The magic of Michael Vick to the 42-yard line. First down. He needs to do that a lot more. Don't know if time is going to allow him to do it. The Falcons need yards in chunks. 20 yards, 15 yards. Get a score. Gain of 30 there. And they're going no huddle here now. Down 20. There's the big toss. It's too tall and incomplete with Crumpler, the intended receiver. Algie Crumpler missed a lot of the OTAs, the off-season workout, and it gave Michael Vick an opportunity to be able to get more comfortable with Roddy White and Michael Jenkins. What has made him uncomfortable this evening is the fact that those two wide receivers cannot get away from Fred Thomas and Mike McKenzie, the two corners of the Saints. That's 8 for 25 total. I mean, that not ever going to win 8 for 25 unless you're running for 300 and he hasn't done which that. they have been doing run for 279 a game Jim Moore I can't believe that a penalty wasn't called on hitting a defenseless receiver because there was no way Crumpler was going to get that they get done again for a loss Brian Young's had a very good game he and Scott Shanley combined for the tackle and Joe you talked about Warwick Dunn he was just so present with Vic as a rushing offense they set a franchise record against Tampa. Their two-game total was the third best in the NFL all time. And tonight, 97 rushing yards. They ran for so many yards, even with all the games played yesterday, the Falcons started the night with 100-plus rushing yards from every other team in the league. And they hadn't played this game yet. Third and a dozen. Here's a blitz. It's picked up. Incomplete intended for White. That's Fred Thomas there again on coverage. It doesn't even look like the wide receivers of the Falcons are making the defensive backs work. They're right there. Fred Thomas just looking at him. Roddy White tries to come back. Boom, right there. The other thing about this game, Mike, is the New Orleans Saints over the last six years have not been a very good home team. They're 19 and 29 at home. They played better on the road. Tonight, you get the feeling it's unbelievable. Going for it on fourth down. Hauled in by Jenkins for the first down at the 30-yard line. Part of the Ohio State Championship team in 2002. Here he is in his third year, which uh, can be the breakthrough year for a wide receiver. You have a third-year receiver, a second-year receiver, and Lalee, who was seen as a somewhat one-dimensional receiver, a deep threat, 
Although the Falcons say he's been pretty good in the complete receiver game thus far. Trumpler tackle gain of about a half yard. You wonder why Roman Harper is starting at safety for the New Orleans Saints. Because he's a number two draft pick who can do things like that. Excellent in the open field, taking on a very big tight end. Has great quickness. Spent a lot of time on the field at Alabama. No huddle, five DBs. Underneath, Justin Griffith meets Scott Fujita. This is one of those drives, like the one last night that Tom Brady spent about nine minutes being on. And, and Atlanta is going to run out of time. Even if they score, it's going to take them six or seven minutes to actually finally score a touchdown. A day when they said, close the businesses at three so the fans can enjoy the first Saints game regular season here since the end of 04. Third down, Vic eludes one, not the second. Charles Grant will get credit. But again, it's Bryant Young, number 66, has been able to come up the middle and be in Michael Vick's face all day. Done a great job up front in a hold here on Atlanta. Holding offense number 74. The penalty is declined. Brings up fourth down. The foul would have been enforced from the previous spot, not the spot of the foul. The offensive line trying to hold people out. Really, this offensive line isn't built to block 35, 40 times. They're built to be able to zone block, move people, get them moving. They pride themselves on small athletic lines. When you drop anybody back, Michael Vick behind them, the big guys start to push them. Fourth down again, need to get to the 20 to keep the drive alive. And as he throws, adjustment by Jenkins. Didn't hold it down, but the flag came down. That, that's got a chance of being offensive pass interference. Michael Jenkins yep. just pushed himself to be open. On Jason Kraft. And remember, the pass was incomplete. The pass is incomplete. Pass interference, offense number 12. The penalty is declined. First down. This must be so frustrating to Atlanta. They come into a circumstance where it's the Saints' first home game in over a year. And they think and they feel that everyone is rooting against them. And it's probably true. Everyone probably is rooting against them. And they can get nothing done, even though for the first two weeks, they look like one of the best teams in the National Football League. Running over Carolina, right? Running over Tampa Bay. They came in here. They probably had to think, okay, we take the crowd out of it. We run over New Orleans. Do you see it on the face, faces of all the players on the team? And, they, and they're wondering, what has happened to us in this building tonight? A 13-play drive gives them nothing. And the Saints fans chant who that. Brian has heard who that think going to beat them Saints, the locals like to say. I imagine what happens now if you're in New Orleans, you try to run out the clock. Where would Sean Payton have learned that? He would have learned it from Bill Parcells, who was one of his mentors along the way. In, in, and when, he, when he uses phrases like unbiased, uh, unbiased yourself as to how we acquired the player. Bill Parcells always referred to people as players. He never mentioned Terrell Owens' name. He just said the player each time. And when you look at Sean Payton and you hear him talk in that clipped way Parcells does, he even sounds like Parcells. The only thing he doesn't have yet at his age is the dripping sarcasm that Parcells has with every comment he makes. But he's a pup out of Parcells for sure. McAllister, as this goes inside the five-minute mark to the 34. Joe, you've been around Sean Payton a lot. You go back through his days when he was with the Giants and the play calling. And, you know, there was such heat there after he was the play calling genius. Jim Fossil had to take over the play calling. But what kind of feel do you have for how Sean's going to do here long term as a head coach? He's laid a foundation of excellence just the way he evaluates his players. Doesn't matter where you come from. Doesn't matter where you're drafted, whether you have any tenure or not. If you play well, you're going to play for me. I thought some of the quotes about maybe not the most talented players, but I'm going to have the best players that work together. That is the way he will approach it, and that will serve him well. Third down, Marcus Colston, who fits that mold to a T, gets the first down at the 45-yard line. You talked about Bill Parcells, Tony. Yeah. When Mickey Loomis, the GM of, this, of the Saints, 
went out looking for coaches. One of the things that he considered was where Sean Payton had coached, and Bill Parcells was a big part of it. As a matter of fact, John Fox, the head coach of the Carolina Panthers, called Mickey Loomis unsolicited and suggested Sean Payton. Hadn't he also worked for Parcells, John Fox? Yep. Everybody seems to have worked and for Parcells at one time or another. Or Sean Bill Payton at the moment, 3-0. and you got to like that. Yeah. Seven catches for Colston, 97 yards for the rookie. And McAllister takes us inside three and a half minutes to the 47 yard line. Susie, what about the players Sean Payton's brought around? Well, I'm going to go back to Tony's point about the influence of Bill Parcells. And a lot of the players were concerned he would be more like a Parcells type of coach, the my way or the highway. But really, they say he's been just the opposite. He's given them the tools for success, but then put the responsibility on them to make their own mark, put their own signature on the team. They describe Peyton as very businesslike. His speeches are quite matter of fact, but they build confidence and they know, Mike, that if they listen to him, they can win. And they can trust him. And mm -hmm. something else, uh, Susie makes a great point, but they can trust him. When he says it's going to be a certain way, that's the way it's going to be. McAllister runs here inside of 250 left. You know, the New Orleans Saints have been a franchise of futility in so many ways for so many years. They have lost on Monday Night Football seven consecutive games, the longest streak uh, that was going, but that will come to an end here tonight. And still, the Saints will have the lowest Monday Night Football percentage at uh, 6 and 15, which will be 7 and 15. Think about this franchise. As we know, it took them so long to just get a winning season. And this is their 40th year. It took them until 1987, which happened to be, by the way, the year the Pope said mass in the dome. Ah. Just, just for them to have a winning record and then going forward in this uh, getting to 40 years now, they've had one playoff win. So there's so much negativity around this franchise for so long. And look at when you have to go back to the last time they had a Monday night win, 13 years ago, really 13 and a half, with Jim Mora's dad, the all-time winningest Saints coach, Jim Mora, on the Saints sideline. And they talked about this game being a game where they can find out where they are. Ernie Conwell said, this is a game will give us a gauge of where we are. And over the next three weeks, they get the Panthers, the Bucks, and the Eagles. So they will be challenged as they go. But you sense a, a degree of confidence coming into them. McAllister twisted around there. And um, that surgically repaired right knee is there at the 45-yard line, shy of the first down. Haven't you been impressed with the unselfishness of Deuce McAllister? The franchise goes out and drafts Reggie Bush. And Deuce McAllister basically says, I'm coming in lighter, my knee's coming back. And he said if Reggie Bush was out there, he would have drafted him. And I think Sean Payton has found a very nice balance between the two. There you see how those uh, numbers balance out tonight. I like when you suggested before that it was providential that with the Pope's visit, <laughs> they were able at that point to have their first winning season of all time. Well, it, it just kind of speaks to the history here as fourth down comes and the Falcons will receive the punt. The history of this building as well, that uh, it's not just the football stadium. So much has happened here of ways and the NFL chiefly among them now you think about it, people at home watching you probably have a Superdome memory that comes to mind right away for you fair catch Rawson 19 yard line Falcons will take over somebody who I know who went to school at Syracuse remembers being in this dome when Keith Smart hit the shot for Indiana and then coming back 16 years later and Carmelo Anthony and Jerry McNamara led Syracuse to a national championship in here there's so many sporting events even Super Bowls in here Six of them. Vic back on the field. To Dunn to the 20 yard line. And it brings it full circle to some degree that one of the reasons they have so many Super Bowls here is because the food is so good that everybody wants to come here, reminding people once again that New Orleans is open for business right now. You mean the media people don't complain as they did in Detroit, or <laughs> some media people <laughs> complained <laughs> in Jacksonville? I don't know who you're talking about. I don't know who about. we're talking about. Waffle yeah. Houses. <laughs> I don't know who you're talking about. There's Vic scrambling for the first down as we arrive at the two-minute warning. again by Will Smith again five New Orleans sacks on the run and they're coming 
from the defensive linemen. It's not like linebackers are blitzing and wide receivers and defensive backs are blitzing. There's a line in the movie On the Waterfront that applies to Michael Vick tonight, and it's it's not your night, kid. It's not your night. Very apropos. Wrapped up like a Christmas package. They have the Cardinals been a bye week through the Falcons. Joe mentioned the Saints go to Carolina, then Tampa Bay comes in here. The following now just going to run it with Justin Griffith, who gets to the 34. I would venture to say, of the 11 guys that start on the defensive side of the ball, seven of them have had a piece of Michael Vick at some point tonight. Very strong Martha and the Vandellas reference by you, Joe. Very strong. Third and six, they're just running to cut your losses here and get on out. Griffith with the tackle, a fourth down coming up. You know, guys, as this game wraps up here tonight, you think people are going to enjoy, they're going to celebrate, they'll have a good time. Tomorrow morning's going to come, and all the problems that people had in New Orleans are still going to be here. But for tonight, they were given a chance to step away and enjoy a moment in this dome that some never thought they would see again. Saints, 3-0. Tom Benson with the parasol. The owner out on the field. As the uh, joyous Saints wrap up this night.